print shop of the Printing and Stationery Detachment, RCASC, the Canadian Army has a plant that would do credit to a city the size of Montreal or Toronto. The ingenious linotype with its hungry melting pot and steadily growing galley of solid lines of ready cast type is of course the most familiar machine in the big army composing room. After being set, the type is proved so that its accuracy may be checked and compared with the original specification. Then it is locked up in steel frames ready for the press, while the paper needed for that particular job is cut to the right size in the power-driven guillotine. Then the type, locked in its steel frame or form, is placed in the press, a vertical press in this case. paper goes round and round and it comes out here. It's an army job throughout, for paper is as much an essential of war as food. Unless there was paper on which an order for food could be written or airmail forms available on which to write home, then a lot of army business just wouldn't get done. So these Canadian craftsmen in khaki are doing highly specialized and important jobs in this little known branch of the Army. Jobs which are essential to smooth administration and efficiency. With the 1st Infantry Brigade under Brigadier H.D. Graham, an inspection of the 1st Division of the Canadian Army was begun. The inspecting officer was Major General Guy Simmons, its new GOC and youngest Major General in the Canadian Army. He called on the 2nd Field Regiment, Royal Canadian Artillery. Then accompanied by the Brigadier and Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Crow, he inspected the senior infantry unit of Canada's peacetime permanent force, the Royal Canadian Regiment. Next, Lieutenant Colonel B.A. Sutcliffe met him at the Hastings and Prince Edward Regiment. The GOC was greeted by Lieutenant Colonel I.S. Johnston, where the 48th Highlanders were drawn up for inspection. A special detachment of BUD troops, trained for special work, were next inspected. And the GOC's visit to the 1st Brigade ended with a march past by the RCRs. Lieutenant Colonel B.M. Hoffmeister of the Sea Force, with Brigadier C. Volks, took the GOC about the lines of Canada's sea force. He paid particular attention to a platoon of old originals who had come overseas with the unit in 1939. After that, Lieutenant Colonel J.C. Jefferson and the Brigadier showed the Edmontons to the General. And Lieutenant Colonel R.A. Lindsay led the march past of the famous Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. At the 3rd Brigade, the 1st Field Regiment was presented by Lieutenant Colonel J.E. Lane, accompanied by Brigadier M.H.S. Penhale. At the Carlton and Yorks, the GOC met Lieutenant Colonel F.D. Tweedy and Brigade Major F.C. Pangman. And then he saw another famous Maritime Province Regiment, the West Nova Scotias. In his tour of this veteran division, Major General Simmons saw as finely trained and equipped a group of fighting men as were ever produced by Canada. A new unit of the Royal Canadian Army Medical Corps is the field dressing station. Its job is to treat wounded direct from the field ambulances before sending them farther back to the casualty clearing stations and hospitals. A quick but thorough examination decides the degree of priority which the case warrants. In serious cases where delay might be fatal, an operation is carried out immediately. The units are highly mobile and can set up their operating tents, or penthouses, in 17 minutes. Speed and great care are essential in the early handling of battle casualties. To counteract the effects of shock, transfusions are given to maintain a steady supply of blood. Using all the science and skill of the medical profession, the RCAMC are developing new methods and techniques to meet the problems of modern war.
veteran of many years' service with the Canadian Scottish Regiment is Wallace, a giant St. Bernard, who is well hardened to the sound of the pipes. On route marches, Wallace acts as a sort of one-dog advance guard and clears the way of any hostile dog patrol. An unusual sort of mascot is Corporal Duck of the Royal Canadian Dragoons. The Corporal's regimental number is FN99, which means nearly a hundred. Corporal Duck has an aggressive, independent nature which reflects in his conduct sheet. A long series of AWLs has several times reverted him to his permanent grade. And just what is a duck's permanent grade anyway? Veteran of overseas service is Rex, a Spanish terrier brought to England by number two tunneling company, RCE. Born in Gibraltar, Rex came back when his unit returned from the rock. Thunder of the 48th Pounders had a German father, but he's now training as hard as any other Canadian to destroy the Nazis. A trained military dog, Thunder does guard and sentry duty, goes on schemes and is a skilled tracker. He's been blown up in a minefield and he doesn't like women. Another unusual mascot is the black goat of the Black Watch. Feeding him is no problem at all. He'll eat anything. In fact, his favorite mess hall is the unit salvage dump. Baby of unit mascots is an unnamed little pup who has adopted the Princess Louise Fusiliers. He's not old enough yet to take the business of soldiering very seriously, but already he's learned that modern weapons make pretty good playthings when they're not booby traps. When the Hastings and Prince Edward Regiment went to France in 1940, they took their cigar store Indian with them, but had to leave him behind buried in Brittany. Now they have his successor, Little Chief Mark II. Little Chief travels with the transport section on schemes and guards the entrance to the camp. And someday, pretty soon, he'll be joined there by Little Chief Mark I. On the 24th of June, a special mass was held at number six Canadian Infantry Reinforcement Unit. The occasion being the celebration of St. Jean Baptiste Day. St. Jean Baptiste is the patron saint of French Canada and French Canadian troops in England celebrated the day in traditional fashion. After a ceremonial march passed, the troops got down to the less serious business of the day. Sergeant Armand Cola started with a bang the sports day, which included the inevitable tug of war. And a thrilling bout between Corporal Leo Burdon and Private Raël Daou, both from Montreal. Of key importance to the success of armored divisions is the work done by the motorized infantry battalions. It is their job to keep the armor moving by seizing and mopping up centers of resistance and by consolidating and holding features taken by the armored units, with men and carriers moving across country at top speed to reach the point of attack, the Westminster Regiment show just what the job involves. Westminster assault symbolizes the spirit of attack which dominates the whole Canadian army. It is an army which has played a long waiting game but whose turn is close at hand. An army highly trained and highly skilled, ready, willing and able to tackle the big job that lies ahead. <laughs> 